The National, a version of this story originally aired on CBC's The Current. Storylines is part of the CBC Audio Doc Unit. I'm Katie Nicholson. Thanks for listening. This is CBC Radio 1, 990 AM, 89.3 FM in Winnipeg. Commotion with Elamine Abdel Mahmoud. It's time to talk about funflation. Crime story. You got one witness who can't be found. This American Life with Ira Glass. There are signs that read, see something, say something. Radio Lab. What is coming up? What is going wrong, actually? The Sunday Magazine with Pia Chattopadhyay. How does the last 24 plus hours complicate or change things? Telling stories. Sunday night on CBC Radio 1 and on the Listen app. You know the feeling of finding a really good podcast? Or the feeling of someone always being there? Like your favorite radio show. Stream CBC Podcasts, CBC Music, and CBC Radio anytime, anywhere. Download the CBC Listen app. This is CBC News. Good afternoon, I'm Riley Lechuk. At noon, Winnipeg is under a mostly cloudy sky, a little bit sunny out there at the moment, 12 degrees. We're expecting a slim chance of some showers this afternoon. Northwest winds gust to 40 this afternoon with a high of 15 degrees. RCMP say officers in southern Manitoba removed three children under the age of six from situations where they were being sexually abused and exploited. The RCMP Internet Child Exploitation Unit arrested four people last month. They found tens of thousands of images of child sexual abuse. Three different communities are involved. RCMP will not name them to protect the identities of the victims. The four suspects are all men between the ages of 37 and 56. They all face charges related to making and distributing child sexual abuse imagery. Well, happening in downtown Winnipeg this hour. Go Jets, baby! Go Jets! It's Winnipeg Jets fans at the Whiteout Street Party last year. True North Sports, along with the Premier, Winnipeg's Mayor and United Way, are announcing plans for this year's playoff parties. Past Whiteout Street Parties have been packed, bringing thousands of people downtown for each game. We'll bring you all the details from this year's Whiteout as soon as we get them. Well, Muslims packed the RBC Convention Centre to gather for Eid this morning. It signifies the end of the holy month of Ramadan and 30 days of fasting. Row after row, Manitobans line the room to pray before spending the rest of the day with family and friends. The Manitoba Islamic Association says 15,000 people were expected to come through the doors throughout the morning. While Eid is normally a time of celebration, Rohin Aziz says this year is harder. It's a little bit different thinking about what's happening across the world. Our brothers and sisters are facing difficulties and we're here to gather as a community, come together and think about what's happening and how we can help. As he says, while there is sadness for what is happening in the Middle East today, they pray as one. Hear more about Eid celebrations in Manitoba coming up right here on Radio Noon. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau is expected to testify this afternoon at the public inquiry into foreign interference in Ottawa. But ahead of his appearance, the inquiry is hearing from Liberal House Leader Karina Gould. She says dealing with potential threats from foreign actors will always be challenging for any government in power. You can't really have a rubric to say if X, then Y and Z, because if you did, you might end up interfering in an election that you maybe didn't need to uh, in terms of saying something publicly because the context will depend on what is happening in that moment. Gould's appearance follows the inquiry hearing that China and other foreign interests attempted to interfere in the last two federal election campaigns. At this point, it's not clear to what extent those efforts were successful. Federal officials are preparing for a repeat of last year's record wildfire season in this country. Emergency Preparedness Minister Harjit Sejan says BC, Alberta and Ontario are all facing drought conditions. On top of that, above normal temperatures are expected all across the country. The temperature trends are very concerning. With the heat and dryness across the country, we can expect that the wildfire season will start sooner and end later 
and potentially be more explosive. Sejan says Ottawa has been preparing for the season, updating its risk assessment and notification systems. It's also training hundreds of firefighters and fire guardians. Ottawa has announced it is doubling tax credits for volunteer firefighters and search and rescue volunteers to $6,000. Well, the allegations against Boeing are piling high. An engineer with the aircraft maker claims its 787 Dreamliner passenger jets could break apart mid-air if used enough times. The Federal Aviation Administration says it is investigating. Kate Fisher reports. The claims, first reported by the New York Times, come two weeks after Boeing's CEO and other senior executives announced they would step down following a series of safety concerns, including a door blowing out of a 737 MAX plane mid-flight in January. Now, whistleblower Sam Salapore alleges that shortcuts during the construction process of the 787 Dreamliner meant that parts of the plane's fuselage were not properly secured. Cured. He warned they could fall apart after thousands of flights. I literally saw people jumping on the pieces of the airplane to get them to align. His lawyer, Deborah Katz, said that Boeing responded with intimidation when he raised the issues with them. He was threatened with physical violence. He was threatened with termination. Boeing has strongly disputed the claim, saying it's fully confident in the plane. Kate Fisher for CBC News, Washington. And finally, a springtime warning from Winnipeg police today. Be extremely careful on the ice and stay off of open waterways. Police say drowning can happen at any time of year. And of course, ice has been melting as temperatures warm up here in southern Manitoba. They say a third of all drownings in this province happened during the colder months between October and April. And that is the CBC News from Winnipeg. You can find news updated any time of day on the CBC News app. And I'll be back with your next local news at 12.30, taking a look at your forecast. Slim chance of some showers today across southern Manitoba. Uh, winds gust to 40 in Winnipeg this afternoon, high of 15 degrees. Winds gust to 50 in Brand and a high of 15 as well. And Thompson's looking at a high of 12. You're listening to CBC Radio 1. Hello, my friends. Happy Wednesday. I'm Janet Stewart. Thanks for joining us today. Eid Mubarak. It is Eid. Today on Radio Nude, we'll catch up with Manitobans celebrating this day, marking the end of Ramadan. Hear why it brought with us a sweet surprise. We'll meet young local filmmakers who are part of Sisler's High School Create program and check in with the winner of the Western Manitoba Science Fair. You know, the Jets are in the playoffs of the NHL. That usually means a lot of fun and excitement in our province. And guess what's happening live? The Winnipeg Whiteout Street Party announcement. Where are the parties? How much will tickets be? We'll take you there live in just a moment. True North Sports and Entertainment is holding a news conference in downtown Winnipeg right now to announce details of the company's plans to celebrate NHL playoff home games with whiteout parties. Kevin Donnelly is one of the people speaking. Let's listen in. I wanted to thank everyone for taking time to come down here and join us here today for our exciting announcement. My name is Sarah Orleski. Good afternoon, everyone. put our passionate fans 
their creativity and their spirit on a national stage and allow all of us to share in our playoff excitement with the entire community. Similar to last year, fans can gather with 5,000 of their closest friends on Donald Street between Portage and Graham, adjacent to County Life Center, and inside the Met Entertainment Center. We want to see those costumes. We want to see those signs of support and your best whiteout attire, which have become the signature to the whole Winnipeg whiteout experience. The whiteout street parties will open two hours prior to puck drop, and fans can watch the game on three giant screens. Last year we had two. This year we're upping the game to three giant screens. Doors into the Canada Life Center will open 90 minutes prior to puck drop. Fans will, of course, enjoy a fully licensed environment and an expanded variety of food trucks and concessions. Official Winnipeg Jets merchandise, along with entertainment and prizes, will be on hand. Game ticket holders are invited to join the street parties prior to taking their seats inside Canada Life Center. We are thrilled again to give back to the community through the street parties. Each $10 whiteout street party ticket will see $5 reinvested into the community through United Way Winnipeg. <laughs> We're grateful for the partnership. Michael Richardson from the United Way Winnipeg will speak on that in more detail later. But first, there is more. In addition to the whiteout street party on Donald, we will see the return of the party in the plaza a True North Square activation hosted by our friends at Hargrave Street Market. Thank you, Bobby. <laughs> the Party in the Plaza is a separate ticketed event that will feature, that will open three hours before the puck drop. It will feature our massive outdoor screen, live entertainment, DJs, incredible food and beverages from all our local Hargrave Street Market vendors. Tickets for both Street Party and the Party in the Plaza will go on sale next Wednesday, one week today, at April the 17th at 10 a.m. through Ticketmaster. As we gear up for the 2024 Stanley Cup playoffs, you'll also want to mark Monday, April the 15th on your calendars. That is the date that round one single game tickets go on sale to everyone. So Monday, April the 15th, 10 a.m., round one single game tickets on sale. We know these tickets will be in high demand and we know they will sell out quickly. Fans eager to secure their spot inside the arena who have not already become season ticket members can still get secured guaranteed seats through the season ticket member campaign. Tickets with the general on sale being Monday, you do have to act now to secure your tickets with a, with a deposit for full half or quarter season packages for the 2024-25 season. You can visit winnipegjets.com slash deposit for more information and to sign up. So now it's Go Jets Go. We're on a four game winning streak. This is exciting times. I'd like to now call on Michael Richardson, CEO of United, Winnipeg, uh, United Way Winnipeg to talk about the community engagement. Thank you. great day. Thank you, Kevin Donnelly. Thank you to the Honorable Wab Canoe, Premier of Manitoba. Thank you, His Worshipship, Scott Gillingham, Mayor of our city. It's an honor to share this podium with you today. So it's moments like this that remind me of the power of coming together for a cause greater than ourselves. I also want to thank Winnipeg Jets, Economic Development Winnipeg, True North Sports and Entertainment, the city of Winnipeg, province of Manitoba, your passion for improving the lives of Winnipeggers is undeniable. Partnering with you on the 2024 Whiteout Street Parties is a pleasure on United Way. Thank you also to every fan who's geared up for this playoff run. As a former athlete in the city, I know the incredible power of Winnipeg fans and the difference it makes on every game. Now, as part of the United Way Winnipeg, I know that when Winnipeggers come together on a common cause, there is an energy and an excitement that gives everyone momentum to move the city forward. So together, as we cheer on our Jets, 
We're rallying the hearts of Winnipeggers, bringing our community together, and ensuring we don't leave anyone behind. In partnership with True North, United Way Winnipeg will invest 100% of the funds raised directly to agencies, programs, and initiatives that's doing critical work on the front lines in mental health, addictions, and homelessness. These funds will make a tangible difference for our Winnipeggers. So again, thank you to all the partners for continuing the path forward with the same energy, the same compassion, and the same determination that got us this far. Together, we can and we will make a difference. I can hear it now. Go, Jets, go. <laughs> yeah, thanks everyone. Thank you, Michael, and thank you, Kevin, as well. It's powerful to see and hear about the impact the Whiteout, Whiteout has had and how it continues to grow and the incredible work that will be facilitated throughout our community through United Way Winnipeg. Well, as all Manitobans are looking forward to the playoffs, we can put our next speakers in that ultra-fan category. Please welcome our Premier, Wab Canoe, to share more from the province. Thank you so much for the great introduction, uh, Sarah. Congratulations, uh, Kevin and Michael, on this great partnership. I want to acknowledge all the important dignitaries here today, my colleague, Minister Samard, Mayor Gillingham, Mickey, <laughs> Benny, <laughs> all of the fans in the white out gear. This is amazing. Uh, Winnipeg Jets hockey means a lot to us as Manitobans. I think we all have memories and uh, you know, cherished moments, whether it's giving the, the kids uh, a jersey or a mini stick and watching them open it on Christmas Day, whether it's uh, being there to watch the big wins or you know, on a personal level, I remember taking one of my boys to a 2018 playoff game and the crowd noise leading up to the anthem is probably the loudest thing I've ever heard in my life. And I think as Winnipeggers, as Manitobans, we all have these uh, experiences that tie us together. And I'm very proud that our team is here to, to play a role in supporting the great efforts of the Winnipeg Jets and True North because Winnipeg Jets hockey is more than just a game. It's an identity. This is part of who we are. And the fact that the whiteout street parties provide an affordable, accessible way for Manitobans from all walks of life to participate is so great. And the fact that it's going to a good cause, the funds being raised, makes it all the better. And so this is one of those things that our national pastime is all about, bringing people together, giving us a reason to celebrate, and also providing an avenue for the community-mindedness that uh, is the hallmark of Manitobans. So I'm just overjoyed to be here today and to indicate our support. And of course, yes, we are here uh, with some funds. The way the funding arrangement works on behalf of the province is that we contribute more money the further the Winnipeg Jets go into the playoffs. <laughs> I absolutely do not want to jinx anything, but I will say that this is one area of government finance where I don't mind seeing us go over budget. <laughs> So congrats to the Jets on clinching, congrats to True North and United Way, and we're so happy to be here. Miigwech, merci, thank you very much. Thank you, Premier. And now another equally excited Winnipeg Jets fan, please welcome Mayor Scott Gillingham. Well, thank you so much, Sarah, and uh, thank you, Mr. Premier and uh, Minister Samard. Great to see uh, Kevin as well and, uh, and Michael, and appreciate uh, Ryan Kupfner and all the work at EDW. This is so exciting. We're once again getting the chance to cheer on our Jets uh, with the whiteout. And I, I want to acknowledge that not only are we going to see whiteout, uh, you know, on the street outside of this building, but you know how it is in Winnipeg. Every school, 
every business throughout the city, no matter where you are, you see people wearing white. And it's, uh, it's something you've got to experience. My mother-in-law lives in a personal care home in Saskatoon, and she will call, will call each other and she'll tell me about the whiteout she sees on TV when she's watching the Jets. And it's kind of like, if, it's not like a Manitoba social. If you're not from Manitoba, you don't understand a Manitoba social until you experience it. If you're not from Winnipeg, you only understand a whiteout once you experience it. And so this year, once again, we're going to get to experience a whiteout party. A lot of coordination is happening right now, and I want to acknowledge the people that are doing all the work to coordinate and get ready for the Whiteout Party. Certainly, uh, Kevin is working with our uh, EDW, uh, working with Kenny Boyce from our city staff to make sure that we're dealing with all things related to um, policing and transit and public works. So all of that work is going on behind the scenes to make this possible, and I want to acknowledge all the people who are working day in and day out on phone calls and email exchanges to make all of this uh, possible so that we get to enjoy it. It includes the downtown biz, uh, Kate and, and others as well, and businesses in the area. I've been a season ticket holder in a group uh, of season ticket holders since the Jets came back in 2011. I, thank you. And I just sent my payment last week to renew my season tickets for next year. So. But we sit in the very last row of the house. I sit in 309, upper deck, top row, the last row, which is actually great because not only can you see everything, you can stand up if you need to and you're not blocking anyone's view. So there's great benefits to it. But like the Premier said, the energy inside the building uh, when, the, when, when the anthem is being sung uh, during a playoff game is you, you've, it's, it's just unbelievable. You've, you've got to experience it. But the whiteout parties are fun because it's one of the very few times in the year, probably one of the only times in the year, when we're hugging complete strangers and high-fiving complete strangers <laughs> when, when the Jets score. It's like, I don't know who you are, but we're celebrating together. That's what Jets hockey does to us. That's what, we, we, what it's like to cheer on our team as they pursue Lord Stanley's Cup. And so we are fully behind them. And uh, I'm proud to wear um, a Josh Morrissey jersey. When I, jersey when I played, I was a defenseman. Um, and uh, so I thought Josh would be great. I'm the 44th mayor, so 44 in the back of the jersey <laughs> makes sense. And it's go Jets, go. Thank you. Earth Day at Fort White Alive is a magical time. And this one is for the birds. Let's celebrate not by looking at the earth below, but by looking up to the skies at our feathered friends who make this place so special. I'm Bryce Hoy. Join me for a virtual bird tour. Come to Fort White Alive's Earth Day celebration April 21st and follow the posted QR codes to learn some amazing bird facts. Visit cbc.ca slash manitoba slash community for more. It is 1221. I'm Janet Stewart and you are listening to Radio Noon on... YouTube, CBC Manitoba's YouTube page. We're on uh, the radio. We're on the CBC uh, Listen app. We are everywhere. We are everywhere, and we're wishing we had an umbrella with us today. We might just need it. In Manitoba, in Winnipeg, it's a mainly cloudy day, but we do have a 30% chance of showers this afternoon. Bit of wind, too, so you're going to have to hang on to the umbrella. We'll have gusts of up to 40 kilometers an hour early this afternoon. Our high today will be 15 degrees. Tonight, 30% uh, chance of showers, partly cloudy, and again, that wind continues. Mix of sun and cloud and 14 degrees tomorrow. In Brandon, a 60% chance of showers today. 15 degrees, your high. And again, strong winds, thir north winds, 30 kilometers an hour, gusting to 50. 60% uh, chance of showers this evening, a risk of a thunderstorm. It, in Brandon tomorrow, a mix of sun and cloud and a high of 13 degrees. For Thompson today, you've got a 30% chance of showers. It's a high of 12 degrees that you're headed for. Tomorrow, you might just see some flurries. It should melt on contact. I'm just saying, hang in there. 12 degrees today, 6 degrees your high on Friday, 7 for your Thursday. Eid Mubarak, 
thousands of Muslims were at the RBC Convention Center in Winnipeg this morning to pray, eat, and celebrate the end of Ramadan. CBC's Brittany Greenslade was there as well. She first spoke with Musa Shakir about what Eid means to him. This year it's like quite sad for us because of like like a lot of repercussions in areas of Middle East, but like, yeah. But we are we are hoping for like better in this year. Like hopefully it would get better for other people too. So yeah. So my name is Aisa Tarsidibe. So today is the celebration of the end of Ramadan. So we are here to pray all together you know, for the Muslim world. Yeah. I'm here with my mom and my two kids. So actually this is a dress from West Africa. So this is where I come from. And uh, the tradition is that we should wear uh, our beautiful clothes and, uh, you know, get our jewelries and, you know, have fun, eat with the family, celebrate. To me, it's important that my kids, uh, that they grow up uh, with our culture, our tradition and uh, the Muslim faith because to me this is the most important thing to tackle this world so to be faithful and trust God and the fact that we all come together and uh, pray all together not only for the Middle East but for the entire world because Muslim is a um, I would say we are it's a tolerant uh, religion so it's not only about Muslims it's about all human beings so it's important to pray for the world the mass praying has more power so that's why uh, we are all eager to come all together and uh, pray together for us Khan, Khan so because it's here especially RBC Center there's a lots of people is coming here different uh, culture and a different community and all together and so it's uh, I feel uh, really good here I'm wearing the, like uh, Arabic culture I'm from Pakistan but I'm wearing for Arabic culture after this I'm going to my sister place family is gathering and the friend gathering all days book for gathering <laughs> lots of food <laughs> after Ramadan <laughs> just with the family not big celebration after Eid Naveed Ahmed. Well, it's a very special occasion for all, all the Muslims across the world. So, I mean, um, it's a very special day for all of us. You want to show your culture, actually. This is the day you want to show because you, you get to meet with different culture, different people from all across the world, all the Muslims, and you see what they're wearing, what we're wearing. So, we want to show our tradition. Yes. I just want to say happy to everyone and enjoy. Celebrations in Winnipeg at the RBC Convention Center. CBC's Chelsea Kemp attempted the Eid celebrations at Brandon's historic dome building today. About 500 people were there. They began their celebration with prayers and ended them with a feast. There were so many people at prayer, some people had to stand outside. <laughs> My name is Amir Farooq. Uh, I'm president of Brandon Islamic Center. And so what's happening today at the Dome Building? So we start our day with the prayers. Like uh, we prayer time was 9 o'clock, but at 8.30 the hall was full. So the hall capacity, I don't know, I asked that before it's 400, but the, we were over capacity and we opened the door and people were standing in the cold. So due to this hall is over and I think you are watching that. Have you ever had to open the door before? Never. <laughs> what does that say about how much bigger the community is getting? Where, like, like it doesn't even fit in the dome building anymore. Actually, community is uh, uh, increasing unexpectedly because a lot of students are coming from different countries. And this is kind of a very, uh, uh, like, uh, uh, fortunate surprise for us and uh, sweet surprise like we are increasing the community Muslim community is increasing and the other hand we are actually getting shorter and shorter in place even in Islamic Center and whichever hall when we think that which hall we should book all the halls are small so I think in future for sure 
we are looking some bigger place maybe city of brandon should think and build a big hall for rent so i want to say eid mubarak from muslim community to the all community members in brandon all the people in canada that the message of peace and message of happiness to everyone thank you so much first name is muhammad last name is abidullah i'm uh, with the brandon islamic center uh, i'm a doctor pathologist working at the westman lab in brandon and i'm affiliated with the brandon islamic center since the very first day i moved to brandon in 2007 why is today so important especially here in brandon you know what it is important all around the world and it is dated back to say 1443 years back are you still trying to get a new bigger mosque for brandon just to meet community need yes we are and we have spent about five to ten years on that project so far because with all these kids and all these family members coming in here we want to have a safe building so we want to have the safety of all the kids that's CBC's Chelsea Camp talking with people today at Brandon's historic dome building as they celebrate Eid. You can read more about the celebrations on our website, cbc.ca slash Manitoba, and on the CBC News tonight at 6. Coming up on Radio Noon, we're going to meet some aspiring filmmakers in Winnipeg and talk about the special program they've been attending. Right now, the time is 12.30. This is CBC News. Good afternoon, I'm Riley Lechuk in Winnipeg at 12.30, 13 degrees in Winnipeg under a mix of sun and clouds this hour. We're expecting a little bit of cloud cover this afternoon. Chances some scattered showers across southern Manitoba. The high today in Winnipeg, 15 degrees. Well, True North hopes that Winnipeg's whiteout parties will be bigger than ever this spring. Vice President Kevin Donnelly just unveiled plans for the Winnipeg Jets' outdoor NHL playoff parties. Fans can gather with 5,000 of their closest friends on Donald Street, between Portage and Graham, adjacent to Canada Life Centre, and inside the Met Entertainment Centre. We want to see those costumes, we want to see those signs of support, and your best whiteout attire, which have become the signature to the whole Winnipeg whiteout experience. Donnelly says there will be three large outdoor screens to watch this year and more food trucks. He says the whiteout parties will start two hours before each game. RCMP say four men from southern Manitoba have been arrested in connection to child sexual abuse imagery. The men were charged after police discovered tens of thousands of images. Police also removed three children under six years of age from situations where they were being sexually abused. RCMP aren't identifying the three communities involved in the investigation in order to protect the identities of the victims. Meantime, RCMP are also warning today that they are seeing more scams involving e-transfers. Mountie say victims receive an email that appears to be from someone trying to send them an Interact e-transfer. When the victim clicks the link and enters in their banking credentials, the scammers are then able to steal their login information. The Bank of Canada is keeping its lending rate at 5%. That is where it has been since last July. Bank Governor Tiff Macklem says a recent drop in inflation is encouraging but needs to be lasting to justify cutting interest rates. We are seeing what we need to see, but we need to see it for longer to be confident that the progress towards price stability will be sustained. The bank's next announcement is set for June. Track and field is about to become the first sport to hand out prize money at the Olympics, and it will start this summer at the Paris Games. World Athletics has announced that every track and field gold medalist in Paris will be paid $50,000. It says payouts to silver and bronze medalists will start at the 2028 Olympics in Los Angeles. And finally, one of the world's best-loved board games is getting a major makeover that targets Gen Z consumers. Mattel says Scrabble will soon have a version in Europe called Scrabble Together, which encourages team play and relies on challenge cards instead of points totals to pick a winner for the game. Some purists are giving that a big thumbs down online because little, of course, has changed in the 75 years since people first started playing Scrabble. And that is your CBC News from Winnipeg. 
What do you think of the idea of Team Scrabble, Riley? I don't know. I, I like the classic Scrabble. Classic. You're more competitive like it's that. The, more competitive. Oh, my goodness. I don't but know. But also, at the nice... same time, creates family fights <laughs> in some, some situations. Well, not in my family. We, you know, we were all struggling to make oh, cat yeah. and ox and things oh, like yeah. that. Uh-huh. Ox on a triple wood score was, you know, a pretty good one. <laughs> yeah. um, thanks very much. No problem. Well, you might need to pull out some board games because we could see some showers today. We've got a 30% chance of showers this afternoon in Winnipeg, a 60% chance in Brandon, even a risk of a thunderstorm there. In Brandon, 15 degrees is going to be your high today, same as in Winnipeg. And uh, in Thompson, there's also a 30% chance of showers and a 12-degree high expected. Let's stay in Thompson for a moment. So Thursday, chance of flurries. Not much accumulation, don't worry. Uh, Friday, a mix of sun and clouds, 6 degrees. Your weekend looks like a cloudy Saturday and a mix of sun and clouds on Sunday, 9 on Sunday, 6 on Saturday. In Brandon, we were talking about how you were in for like this incredibly warm weekend, and I knew, I knew that that projected long-range forecast just was too good to be true. At one point, they were saying 27 degrees for your Saturday. Environment uh, and Climate Change Canada is now down to 20 for Saturday. That's still pretty good. Okay, so Thursday, you got mix of sun and cloud, 13 degrees. Friday, 17 degrees. Saturday, 20 You know, you really can't complain. Sunday, 15 and sunny. And Winnipeg, much the same. 14 degrees on Thursday, mix of sun and cloud. Sunshine and 14 Friday. Cloudy and 18 on Saturday, mix of sun and cloud. And 15 on our Sunday. I don't know if you heard any shuffling coming in, but I've got some friends who joined me in the studio today, joined me there, just shuffling in. Uh, they're friends and they're creators whose work you may have seen. It's uh, work that we've been showing you as part of a CBC mentorship program. These filmmakers are from Sisler's Create program. They're all people who graduated from grade 12 and then went back to school to take part in this special training program for the creative industries. The people we're talking to today are young filmmakers. As I mentioned, CBC Manitoba mentored students on some of the short docs you may have seen or heard through the year. Here are just some clips from just a few of them. Um, So this is Dylan's room. It has always been Dylan's room. Sort of messy because we left it sort of the way he had it, (laughs) which was messy, disorganized. When he started to understand that I was losing friends to cancer and his grandparents battled cancer, he had said to me from probably eight years old and on, I I don't want to die of cancer. My name is Calandra Stroop. My pronouns are she, her. I like to keep things clean. I like to wash my hands. So I do a lot of hand washing. I do a lot of showering. I do a lot of cleaning. Every little thing that I do, I have to think about. Think about the consequences that it could have and what sort of compulsions it could lead to. It's really just, it's kind of agonizing and it never ends. We lived in a house that had a lot of paranormal activity. And I mean, when, and when you're a kid, you just think it's just noises and your mom and dad go, that's just the pipes in the wall and blah, blah, blah. Uh, doors would close and opening, lights would turn on and off and we would hear footsteps outside our bedrooms, my sister and I. I knew something was weird and there was a name for it, or, you know, ghosts or paranormal. Hi, my name is Marika Shala. My spirit name is White Cloud Woman and I belong to the Deer Clan. I am an award-winning educator, author, and mother of two. So I am the author of Stella, Welcome to Your Dotum. And Stella is a tale of empowerment and self-discovery. Having those spaces for students to learn about their culture, to learn about their language, is so important for reconciliation. Those were highlights from some of the stories produced this year by students from the CREATE program. Student filmmakers Sean Monfero and Bridget Clemente join me now. Hi, thanks for being here. Hello. Hello. Bridget, let me start with you. We just heard a little bit of your story at the end there. Tell me a bit about it. So basically, the the documentary is about Marika Shala. She basically created a book about the clan system. Um, The documentary is basically about showing more on about um, being mixed Indigenous and basically um, 
talking more about um, just the need of uh, what's it called representation. And um, the book is actually um, for reconciliation to for Act 47. Um, From the Truth and Reconciliation Truth and Reconciliation. Yes, yes, yeah, yes. calls to action. Um, she's a Winnipeg teacher who wrote that book in Anishinaabe and Métis for her students. Yes. Wow. I think um, the, the documentary is highlighting um, Stella. Welcome to your dotum. Yeah. Yeah. That's fantastic. I should also mention, because I completely forgot him, that we have a third uh, person at our table to lay. <laughs> Hello. That is the voice of Create Educator John Dick Lyons. I'm going to talk to you in just a minute about this special program. But, Sean, uh, we heard a bit of your piece, too. Could you tell me a bit about that? So my piece is about the amazing Dylan Bucci and his legacy, uh, where he created a system at Sisler High School where he took a bunch of old computers and used it to reroute uh, cancer data from medical research facilities and send it back to those same research facilities to save more time for them. So in, in this case, he saved over 100 years worth of time. That's amazing because he aggregated all this data yeah. for them, all these numbers. And there's kind of a sad twist to this story, too. I remember it, and it made me cry, this whole documentary. Yeah. It uh, was uh, really unfortunate to hear that uh, he, uh, even after saving all this time trying to save other people's lives uh, uh, from cancer th themselves, he unfortunately had it uh, and, diagnosed. And he died. Yeah. Yeah. But what a wonderful legacy he left. And now you've helped us to, to save that story and to tell it for other people. That's yeah. great. Thank you for that. Um, I understand, Bridget, that you ha were making videos when you were a little kid. Yes, I was. I think that's how my whole passion for the film industry kind of started. So um, growing up, um, I actually started off my grandma's computer webcam, just recording myself singing, dancing, posting on, on YouTube. And then as I grew up, um, I started watching more YouTube videos, getting inspired, and ended up in the Sister Create program, finally um, doing short films and documents documentaries yeah wow amazing and let's go to john now and talk about this program what is it yeah so i mean our the sisler create program is um high school and post high training in motion picture arts and interactive digital media um and so we offer training in uh, animation film and game design and so we have a wide range of courses that we offer to high school students and then what's really cool is our, our post high program where uh, recent graduates as you mentioned uh can actually come back to take a year uh, of intensive training to upgrade their skills in those areas. And so the group that we're with today is our uh, post-high film cohort. And uh, yeah, the, the year looks like, you know, I'm producing mini documentaries for CBC, moving on to narrative short films. And uh, right now another group is working on a, a, a three-part uh, mini series uh, for TV. Wow. Sean, I understand you started out interested in science? Yeah. Oh, my God. I Coming into, like, high school, uh, I never really knew what I wanted to do. But beforehand, I had, like, so many different types of dreams. I wanted to be, like, an astronaut or, like, a marine biologist for some reason. I don't know how that started. But coming into this, I saw that film was an option. And I was like, hey, you know what? At the time, I watched so many, like, Marvel movies and all sorts of things like that with my family. Why not give it a chance? And after four long years of grueling hard work, work, I now realize, yes, this is what I want to do. Be a filmmaker. Absolutely. So well, I want to jump back to, uh, to that and to the miniseries I was mentioning. Um, so it's actually about three students who are pursuing careers in uh, the creative industry, and Sean is actually one of those uh, subjects. Ooh. So he's going to be uh, having an episode featured on him. What's it like being on the other side of the camera? It's uh, it's really intimidating, actually. <laughs> you know, you you wouldn't uh, you wouldn't worry about how seeing your face on camera when you're behind it, but now being the interviewee, it's like, oh, what do I say? <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I'm so excited. Bridget, what would you tell anybody about? The, the CREATE program? I think that the Sister CREATE program has helped not only me, but a lot of people. Um, what's it called? If you really love um, partaking in, cre in creative media industry, I would definitely recommend taking Sister CREATE first because you will get to learn things that you have not um, known before, before you actually go on and pursue um, what's it called? Um, college or let's say university. It's a very good start of um, what's it called, um, training, yes. And 
probably to help you too figure out what you really love. Yes, ex- yes. It's a big old world out there. And one of the hardest things I think people your age would say is figuring out what do I want to do? Yeah. Is that, um, am I right? Yeah. And the thing is, you don't have to necessarily just take one thing. You could, um, we have not only film, we also have animation, 3 and 2D animation, and also game designs. So if you if you want to try out, if you have a wide variety range of, let's say, um, creative industry, then yeah, definitely take Sister Creative. John Dick Lyons, what is it that you like most about being the instructor here? Oh, my God. I mean, it's it's just fun. Um, it's, uh, yeah. What's it's, your background? Uh, so my background is, um, well, I actually majored in advertising and I uh, went to creative communications at Red River. And, um, you know, I when I was growing up, I was made all kinds of little short movies and films and things like that and skateboard videos and uh, all of that stuff. So I loved it and, and I just love the medium. Um, and, uh, yeah, I was very fortunate to link up with the program and, and start teaching, you know, uh, intro film courses and that kind of thing. And it's, it's just grown so much, uh, in the last, you know, five, 10 years. Um, it's, it's really, really a treat. And I, I love also just, um, one thing that is, is so great year over year is as we meet these new students and they come through our programs, we get to learn their stories and we get to help them build their voice to tell their own stories. And I mean, that's just endlessly, uh, enjoy in, you know, I get endless enjoyment out of it and, um, yeah, it's, it's always fun and new. Um, yeah. So, um, uh, my teaching partner and I, uh, Marcus Fowler, uh, we both have a lot of fun, uh, teaching this group. Um, yeah, we're really lucky. Everybody's smiling and nodding. Yes. You're not gonna, yeah, he's not all that fun. Everybody's smiling and nodding. I'm getting waves. We have extra people in the control room. I don't think we can show you our friends on YouTube, but uh, we've got people there. So, Sean, what do you think? Like, what's the next step for you? Where do you go after Create? I mean, really, as of right now, it's just to head over to college, Red River College, pursue digital film and media production there, and from there on, honestly, it's a, everything's wide open. I mean, there's a pathway on to getting onto set. There's trying to do some freelance work. I mean, it's kind of all over the place, but I'm really open to everything. Bridget? Yes, yeah, the same as Sean, definitely going to college, waiting for an acceptance letter from Red River. And it's also, yeah, yeah. And um, also, yeah, freelance videographer work, definitely looking into that upcoming summer. Well, guys, have a great time and i look forward to seeing your work in the future thank you for sharing this thank you thanks so much thanks Thank for your work those are creative student filmmakers sean monfero and bridget clemente with sisler high school educator john dick lyons who helped run creates filmmaking program to watch their stories and all the others from the create program you can go looking on cbc.ca slash manitoba or cbc manitoba's youtube page So
That is the Manitoba band Unexpected End with their song, Texaco. If you were with us yesterday, you'll remember that 368 students from grades 1 to 12 showed off their science projects at the Western Manitoba Science Fair. It was held at the University of Brandon. At the fair, we spoke yesterday with grade 7 student and competitor Abraham Mojas. His project was titled Mood Foods, a comprehensive study investigating the impact of nutrient-rich snacks on cognitive performance, productivity, and mental well-being. I asked Abraham what inspired his interest in science. Me and my brother were playing chess one day after school, and he had won two games, which is very unusual to me. And our mom told us that we had snacks left over from school. And after that, we we ate our leftover snacks. I had orange slices. He had chips. And after this, we watched a bit of TV. And I'd won three games after that. And that got me thinking, do nutrients really affect brain health and cognitive performance? And sure enough, they do. medal. And sure enough, Abraham won. Not just a gold medal in his individual category yesterday at the Western Manitoba Science Fair, but the top prize in the whole show, Best of Fair. Hello again, Abraham. Hello. How are you feeling today? Pretty great. Pretty great. I think so. What did what did you think when the judges announced last night that you'd won best in fair? I was uh, super surprised because I saw some of the other competitors getting their awards, and I was like, "Oh, there might be another grade twelve project that might have beat me." And if you were to see the live stream, you would see that they called my name, and I was shaking of excitement. I was completely uh, it was completely unexpected. Well, congratulations. Your parents were there with you. What did they say? They're really proud of me because I'd started my project 10 days before my, uh, I started my project 10 days before my school science fair. And my parents and my brother doubted me just a bit, but I came out as gold and they're like, continue on what you're doing. You'll be great. What's it been like at school today? Oh, some of the kids, some of the kids were uh, congratulating me and trying to get my signature. You've been handing out autographs. Yeah, <laughs> um, that's cool. How does that make you feel? Makes me feel pretty great. But I wouldn't have done this all by myself. You should thank my uh, teacher, Tim Frycota. He helped a lot in this. And I'm sure he's very proud of you, too. Yeah. Now, Abraham, this means you've won a trip to Ottawa in May to compete at the Canada-wide science fair at Carleton University. What do you think about that? Uh, It feels pretty great to be around other scientists just like me, young, but really brilliant. Yeah, I imagine. Have you ever been in an environment like that? Uh, No, not much. Have you ever been on a plane? No, it's my first time. Have you ever ever been out? You've never been out of Manitoba? Well, I've been to Alberta and Saskatchewan. That's the furthest I've ever been. But have you ever won a free trip before? Never have have I ever. 
I don't know if you can tell. I'm trying to get you to show me how excited you are. This is cool. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Who are you going to take with you, your mom or your dad? I'm taking both of them. Oh, isn't that fun? Yeah. Your brother doesn't get to come? Oh, my brother gets to come because, I mean, he doesn't really want to stay here by himself. I suppose that's true. So what's your plan, do you think? Where, what do you want to do when you head to university and then into your career? Well, af- before I get to the university, I want to deepen my research, get a better poster board. I'm going to be testing in a lot more students because so far I've only gotten 40 participants. So you need a larger sample scientifically yeah. for your nutritional yeah, study. Larger sample size. Do you think nutrition is what you're interested in? Uh, more into neuroscience itself. Excellent. We can use some neuroscientists. Yeah. Great news. Well, Abraham Mojas, thank you so much and congratulations. It's really cool talking to you. Thanks. Have you're a great welcome. trip. That is grade seven student from Brandon. Abraham Mojas, he won the Western Manitoba Science Fair yesterday. We just talked to him yesterday because, you know, I called them up and said, can you find me a student? And they said, yeah, here's this great kid. And sure enough, he was so great, he beat out hundreds of other competitors, including the kids in grade 12. He's only in grade 7, remember. That's pretty extraordinary. Let's play a little bit more music for you now. Off her EP from 2022, If It's Not Forever, Cassidy Mann with Tropical Sour Candy. Tropical Sour Candy from Cassidy Mann, a Winnipeg singer-songwriter. It's 12.58 here on CBC Radio Noon. It's time for us to wrap up for another day and to thank all the people who work on this program. Uh, It's only my third day as host of Radio Noon, and I've really come to rely on our current affairs team here, particularly our producer, Wendy Parker, our technician, Dylan Longhurst, We've got Brad Lillies and Travis Peterson working today to get our stream up on YouTube. Thank you to all the folks watching there. On Remember, it's CBC Manitoba's YouTube page where you can find us. The show producer overall for Current Affairs is Nellie Gonzalez, and the senior producer of audio is Leif Larson. Thanks again for spending time with me today. You are listening to CBC Radio 1. Coming up next, Writers & Company. <laughs>